As I walk through the darkest woods, every step taken forward, I shall want not of candle, for the light is inside me, and my brothers beside me. We are the Snake's Head Militia. The militia got started about eight years ago in high school. In all honesty, as a eco-terrorist organization of sorts, uh, not to mention a preparedness-oriented one, but over its history, that mission has shifted. Towards more so than... Towards uh, legal things. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> We've hovered around a half dozen members for the entire time, several of which are still continuously active. As the people move in and out of town, we you know, lose and gain people. Well, we try and get out at least every weekend to go train and go be ready, go make sure that we're prepared. A lot of the times we'll go camping in the woods, so go and experiment with different survival tactics and a lot of the times we'll end up doing meetings uh, normally once every like other week we'll just get together and discuss activities that went on and what we've all accomplished and how the world is changing at ease okay we have the historians recap from the last meeting for since our last meeting, at which I am Mr. A, a member of the militia, and I am the militia historian. I keep track of the different activities and events we do, and try and keep track of uh, the basics of people's gear. And um, yep, that's my, my role in the militia. That's my particular role. Mr. J, Mr. O, and Mr. T, right? <laughs> Uh, all went out and had them an otter shoot at a family friend's property, which was an epic otter shootout, which ended in man winning, animal losing. <laughs> the classic. Don't forget the guerrilla training by the Santista Rebel. And they also had some guerrilla warfare training by one of them South American Rebs from back in the day. Yeah, the guy who trained us uh, was a Santista rebel, a Nicaraguan freedom fighter who was trained with the Soviets. He trained in, uh, I believe, Russia, um, Cuba. In any case, he shot down an American helicopter. And um, now he lives in America. He's met the guys that he shot down and they're on good terms. The guy said that that was what real warfare was about. Real warfare. And uh, I tend to believe him. And, you know, that was about as good as I could imagine. So what did he do with you guys when you were there? He uh, gave us shooting instruction. Uh, I found his prone shooting instruction to be most useful. Um, he definitely knew what he was doing. He tried to uh, show me to shoot my pistol sideways, which I could see having some merit, but that was a little bit goofy. I'm going to emulate law enforcement. <laughs> You're right. And Pull. Commander uh. got his raft out on the water, successfully. I look forward to having a float and drink sometime. Yeah. Should be good. Yeah. 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 Also, I would like to point out that making a raft is really pretty much free from stuff on campus, and that more rafts should all make be rafts. Made. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I can help anybody with a raft they want to build. Yeah. So where'd you get the materials to build this? All out of uh, USF dumpsters. It, with the exception of the strap and nose. 
trash raft, 1.0. He just went and constructed it over the course of several months. And he just collected a piece at a time and just like, oh, this little piece of two by four is exactly what I need. And it's just sitting in the trash for anybody to take because they don't want it anymore. <laughs> and all those things yeah. were just chemical containers that we cleaned out and I just slowly but surely watched him construct this huge, awesome raft. We're just gonna go for raft testing number two in open water. And uh, we know it can hold two me-sized people sufficiently. So today we'll find out if it can hold three and give uh, brooms to test his paddles. So. Oh, don't worry about me. <laughs> oh, yeah. The basis yeah. is 10 five gallon steel uh, chemical oh, drums, and then two by fours, and a little bit of plywood, and some nails, and metal strap. Drums just sit up underneath and are held on by the strap and the drums are all sealed up. Yeah. Think about it, if the zombie apocalypse hits, zombies can't swim. That's basically the heart of matter because they sink. So they just walk across it. You just go to a really deep place with this raft and you just sit there and you can't get killed. Run away from anything. It gives you so much more maneuverability. Very few people think to take to the river and escape when the apocalypse hits. Am I going to take lens caps off? Yeah. Alright, so right now we're going in through a unlikely back entrance. It's a little squishy, but um, for the same reason we favor a nighttime insertion, we prefer to go the most discreet route. Both militia and survivalist have a negative connotation thanks to survivalism in the 80s, the militia movement in the 80s and 90s, and that's just a misunderstanding. We by technicality are a militia, but that doesn't mean that there's any reason to be afraid of us. It's, uh, you know, we are survivalists, but that doesn't mean that this is Waco. Looks like something that's, but it's a little reflector uh, tack. We've seen um, little round sticky dots on the trees out here before, but we haven't seen tacks like this. Um, doesn't look recent though, so. We really are a, a legal militia. We follow all the laws of the land, and you know we understand that that still can freak people out, and that's why we're not out, you know. Uh, hooting and hollering about it and, and being a, a public group, you know, we just remain private because there's really no reason we have to, you know, uh, tell anyone what we're doing because most of what we're doing is just going out camping as a group and going out and uh, 
doing different survival training and that stuff that, you know, isn't that weird for people to organize and do. It's just that the connotation of, you know, how we organize to do it um, might be a little weird for some people, but it really shouldn't be. At least that's what we think. The club has always been a secret one, I guess you'd say, um, since its founding uh, in high school with the original members. You know, we've realized that even though everything we do is legal, most people probably wouldn't see it that way or, you know, would take some time to see it that way. And when you hear the word militia, you know, when you think of things like this, um, people, people get scared and they get a little weirded out and um, it can generally, you know, turn into a bad situation. So we've sidestepped that by just always having the club be something that only the members know about. And this documentary is no exception, so that's why we're wearing the bandanas. We don't always wear the bandanas, um, though a lot of us carry them. Yep, so that's the basics of why we have to remain anonymous, is because uh, yeah, if we don't have militias in this country anymore, we're just trying to bring it back. We're currently at our old bug out spot. Our group uh, always maintains a bug out spot or two, and this is a location which we can retreat to should shit ever hit the fan. And uh, we're currently on a little island in the swamp. Things are high and dry here. And uh, this is no longer our primary consideration should we have to bug out because it's a little bit too close to civilization. Our new spot is much preferable, but we decided to come out and check this place out tonight because it's been about a year since we've been here. There's not a whole lot of signs of uh, human activity, so that's good. All of our structures are still here, including our decrepit tree fort which um, at some point somebody might get into. However, it would probably be ill-advised. All right, so this lookout post was constructed over a year ago from uh, recycled lumber, and its stability is highly questionable, but there's only one way to find out for sure. And principally, when you have a lookout, uh, at night what they're doing is being a here out really and so positioning somebody up there would take them out of any conversations and allow them to really get a good listen um so that was the primary purpose of this so far things seem pretty sturdy We do frequent areas that you're not really supposed to, and Mr. A prefers to avoid going in those areas because of the future career that he's getting into. Law enforcement. And most of us are a little less concerned, and I feel like most of the trespassing that I do, I would just get, you know, scolded a little bit for. But you never know, and uh, thus we are always careful trespassers.